I'm Trip Douglas. Welcome home, Mr. Doc. And I'm Ernie Douglas. James Bond, Secret Agent 007. And we're here to tell you... Ernie! Just a minute, Uncle Charlie. Come on, Ernie, you're gonna be late for school. We're doing a promo for Me TV and Jump. Ernie, Trip. Yes, Dad. Come here a minute, will you? We'll be down in a minute. As I was saying... <laughs> Tramp, be quiet. <laughs> Tramp? <laughs> hey, have you guys seen Robbie? Oh, hi, I'm Katie Douglas. We're my three sons. Ernie, I had to learn about women like Melissa through long, tough experience. Let me make my own mistakes. They're half the fun. And one daughter-in-law. Thanks. Now I really feel like one of the family. Watch me on me. Me TV. You think girls are just boys' gift wrap? <laughs> Weekday mornings at 7, 6 central on Me TV. It's real neat. Hi, I'm John Malos, and welcome to Connect With Me here live on the showroom floor on Comcast 187 and 43.6. Today we're going to be talking about religion. It's Easter. Well, not yet, but in a week and a half, it'll be Good Friday and then Easter Sunday, at least for the western half. For the eastern half, it'll be later in the year. Your phone calls are encouraged. We're going to talk about the crucifixion today, 265-4331. Back in a moment. You know, I ask my kids this all the time, what is your favorite vacation? What's your favorite holiday? And they always say Christmas, and natural, I think most kids probably would agree with that, but they also like Easter, they like Valentine's Day, but you know why they like Easter? They get two weeks off from school. <laughs> Christmas is like three weeks off from school, so that's how they relate these holidays, is how much time they get away from the classroom at their various uh, schools. But anyway, it is a spiritual time of the year, at least for a lot of people it is, in Jerusalem it is, uh, around the world it is, and it will be for those celebrating Easter in about a week and a half. Let's go to the videotape. I'll show you what I'm talking about when it comes to Easter because it's uh, close and fast approaching. The path that Jesus walked carrying the cross more than 2,000 years ago is known as Via Della Rosa in the old city of Jerusalem. This is what Easter is all about, my friends. There are 14 stations along the path, if you haven't been there, that marks various events that happen at each station for Jesus. For example, Station 1 is where Jesus began his journey after being condemned to death by Pontius Pilate. Station 4 is where Jesus met his mother. Station 6 is where a woman apparently wiped the face of Jesus. Now, Via Della Rosa means way of grief in Latin. The journey ended what is now known as the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. It sits on a hill in the old city, hard to miss if you go there. His body was laid on a piece of stone, then it was wrapped in linen with spices, all according to the old scripture. Live in our studio now is Rodney Lowry, a police chaplain here with the city of Fresno and the Fresno Police Department. We're going to talk about Easter. We'll talk about the crucifixion. Of course, the walk up the hill in Old Jerusalem, 14 different stations. What does Easter mean to you? Or does it? Does it mean... Not, uh, I mean, does it mean anything to you at this point? Are there some atheists out there that really don't believe what actually happened more than 2,000 years ago in the old city of Jerusalem? 265-4331. We're back in just a moment. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. You know, the one big way to get into an argument with somebody, either a friend or a family member, especially during the holidays, is to talk about religion 
or politics. Those are the two favorite subjects that really causes uh, an eruption to happen when everything is calm and then you bring up the, the topic of religion and everything just goes haywire from that point on. Am I right about that, Rodney? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you just can't please everybody, can you? Can. You? you can. Yeah, so how many people do you run into that you, uh, you tell them you're a chaplain now for the Fresno Police Department they say, well, you know what? I'm not a real believer. I just don't really believe that all of those things happened more than 2,000 years ago. They're, they're not happening now. How did they happen back then? Right. You know, very few, to be honest with you. Really? There are more agnostic people that just aren't sure about Scripture. They're kind of in the know. middle? They're, they are. They're in the middle. Um, you know, I've run into just a handful of people that just absolutely refuse to believe in, uh, in a higher power. What do they think? What do they believe? You know, um, not sure. they're, 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 <laughs> they're not, they're sure. not sure. <laughs> they're not sure. But uh, most of it, you know, obviously is the uh, the idea of evolution and just by chance, coincidence, uh, no See, purpose to life. See, I told you, we have a phone call right now, right? We got a phone call. Okay, uh, let's take it real quick. See, we sparked a phone call already. Good Talking deal. Religion. Good deal. Good morning, you're on Connect With... No, nope, you're not on Connect With Me. Okay, it was. Uh, a phone call was actually there a moment ago. But w why do you think in your own mind, before we start talking about Easter and Passover and all these various uh, different things that, that happened according to the Scripture, of course, um, why do you think that religion sparks so much of a controversy and, and eruptions? Uh, I mean, just about every war has been over religion. At some point, you know, well, it's no surprise. The Bible tells us that there's going to be uh, a separation when mm -hmm. religion's talked about. A separation I, uh, in beliefs. Okay. People, uh, people, people are going to believe differently. Uh, you know, I, my uh, my understanding and interpretation is that people don't like to be accountable. And as soon as you <laughs> believe or say that there is a higher power, that there is a God, then you necessarily become accountable to that God. Uh, that, that's that's, that's as simple as that. That is as simple as I can put it. <laughs> we do have a call now. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me with Rodney Lowry, the police chaplain uh, here in Fresno. How are you? Okay. How are you doing? Good. What's your question? My question is, you have a police chaplain. Why don't you have a Catholic priest there that might be more knowledgeable about Easter? <laughs> I'll just let Rodney answer that. Well, um, I, think, uh, I think I could probably answer... Any questions that you might have this morning on Easter? We do know that it is, uh, it, at its core, it is the hope of the Christian community. Everything rides on the uh, the ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right. What is it that you would like to know that you think Rodney doesn't can't answer your question? What what question do you have specifically? My question is, uh, how much education do you have on on the religion compared to a Catholic priest? How much religion? How Studies? much education do you oh. have compared to, say, a Catholic priest? Now, you're a chaplain of the Fresno Police I'm Department. I am. I'm a chaplain. I'm the senior chaplain What's for the, the Fresno Police Department. I, you know, I don't know the difference. I can okay. tell you what I have. I have a uh, bachelor's degree in Bible and theology. I have a master's of divinity, uh, which took me about uh, seven years to, to obtain. Right. So compared to the priesthood, I, I'm not sure what the education level there is, but, but that's mine. Well, here's the, are you, Carl, are you still there? Okay, so you, uh, uh, do you believe in, uh, as the officer, do you believe in going over there and maybe getting and shooting somebody that does a felon or something? I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand you. Maybe we, we got to speak as, up, probably. Speak as up. As a chaplain, uh, you do the religion. That is not kill. But if you're a police officer, would you kill somebody if you have, if you have to? Um, yeah, I think uh, Scripture, uh, specifically Romans 13, God ordains government, and uh, there are times when, when that may have to occur. And, and that, that was actually set forth in, uh, um, by God himself. You know, one thing I have a question is that the city of Fresno, when they have religious uh, gathering or whatever, they never get a Catholic priest. They always get a, a minister. That's my question. I kind of get offended on that, because they always have one certain type of religion. 
Well, let me, let me answer that because you asked the question initially when you called. Last week, of course, we had Pope Francis uh, being elected by, obviously, the Cardinals to be the next Pope, of course, in the Vatican. That took place last week. We had Father Mike Listeri, a Catholic priest in Hanford, on this program. I didn't want to ask him back again because it was too close. I mean, he was just on last week. And then the following day, we had Jim Grant, who hosts two programs on KNXT Channel 49. He is um, a theologian, uh, so to speak. I mean, he, he has a very vast, wide knowledge of the religion, uh, especially the Catholic religion. And, 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 of course, Channel 49 is a Catholic station. So, you know, to say we haven't had anybody from the Catholic Church here. In fact, Jim Grant's been on twice. Um, Colin Doherty has been on this program, who is the general manager of Channel 49. So I wanted to get a little different perspective on Easter from a police chaplain. He's not a priest, he's not a minister, but he may have a different take on it. Does that kind of answer your question, sir? It kind of does, but I'd be nice sometimes to see a, a Catholic priest in Fresno to ask, ask, uh, answer questions regarding Fresno. I'll tell you what, I will make an effort to get a Catholic priest on this program. Uh, someone other than, than Father Mike Listeri, who's very knowledgeable, very nice guy. I'll reach out to somebody maybe at St. Anthony's Catholic Church. But for now, we have Rodney Lauer. So you either have to accept him or <laughs> watch something else. <laughs> How's that? Is that a okay. deal? All Thank right. You. All right. You have a good one. Let's talk about, we've only got 30 seconds in this segment, but, but what does Easter mean to you? Easter, for me, helps me to look back at what Christ did, historically speaking, Sacrifice. on the cross, the, uh, the atonement for sin, uh, bridging the gap or the reconciliation f for mankind and God. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no other way. And in the immediate, it, it lets me know that I have power uh, to walk in this world and try to be as pleasing to God as I can. And then it gives me a future hope of, uh, of an eternity spent with uh, my creator. Yeah. Didn't I tell you, uh, as soon as you start talking religion, there's a little bit of controversy that ca not happy that we don't have a Catholic priest up. Yeah, and I apologize that. I it's apologize always, for that. It's always something. Now let's take this quick call before we go to break here. Good morning. You're on with Rodney Lowry. How are you? Just fine. Thank you. What's your question? Quick, you're on the air. Oh, go ahead and question, speak up. Quick. I just want to uh, commend uh, the chaplains who uh, do the job that they do. Well, thank you. Th that means a lot. Thank you very much. You're so welcome because Great. you are devoted to your mission that the Lord has set before you. Right. Okay. Well, thank you for your call, ma'am. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. We're going to be back with more of our conversation about religion, Easter, and the resurrection. And Rodney Lowry, in just a moment, 265 4331 is the number. I love a joke. Say, Lucky. Yeah, Ricky? A tramp came up to me in the street and he said he hadn't had a bite in weeks. What'd you do, bite him? <laughs> Opening joke. Uh, Opening butler joke, buddy. Come on. That the master says to the butler, uh, Jeeves, did you put fresh water in the goldfish bowl? And the butler says, why? They didn't drink up what I gave him last night. Good. You know that ancient joke about the guy who saves his regiment? He shoots the cook? <laughs> no. How does it go? <laughs> Talking religion once again, spiritual spectrum here on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno. Uh, Rodney, let's uh, turn to the monitor now and take a look at some videotape, and we'll talk about uh, the, the path that Jesus uh, took according to the scripture on Good Friday. Of course, there were 14 stations. This is the Wailing Wall there in Jerusalem. Actually had a chance, uh, I was very blessed, had a chance to go to Jerusalem about uh, 13 years ago, and the path that he took was a very violent one, was it not? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. What that, is that path that he took up to the hill to be crucified? What is that what is that walk up there with the cross? What does that signify to you? You know what does I, it signify for mankind? I can uh, I'll be honest with you, I can't imagine being God himself, uh, the incarnate, both flesh and uh, and spirit and have to put up with that. The, uh, the humiliation. He the could abuse. have stopped it, in your opinion? 
Could he have stopped it if he wanted to? If he didn't love his creation, absolutely, he could have. In yeah. fact, he asked in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, if, if there's any other way to reconcile mankind, our, our creation, back to you, aside from me going to the cross, but, uh, but not my will, yours. So right. he, he posed the question. Right, right. Let's put a map up on the screen here and take a look at the 14 stations that uh, Jesus walked on his way. This is a map that we took uh, from the Internet. I just want to leave that up there just for a moment. I want to go through this just, just real quick. Um, station 2 is where Jesus received the cross. Station 4, he met his mother Mary. Station 5, Simon the uh, uh, Cenarian uh, helped Jesus with the cross. Then in Station 6, a woman actually wiped his face. Uh, station 7, Jesus falls for the second time. Here's something that I'd like you to comment on. Station 8, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, weep for yourselves and for your children. What does he mean by that as he is going, walking to his death? Well, I, I think what it means is that uh, the children of Israel will not, not all of them will believe in the crucifixion. Is that what that statement means? I, you know, I, I think so. I have not studied that right. um, in the original language. I have not studied it in length. Um, but certainly, certainly there would be no weeping in his mind uh, because there's going to be the reconciliation once he dies upon the cross and then uh, um, is brought back to life on the right. third day. Let's take a let's take a quick call here. Good morning, you're on Connect with me, talking about Easter with uh, Rodney Lowry of the police department. Here he's a chaplain. How are you? Oh, good morning, and uh, happier Easter. Oh, okay. Um, I you I was listening right now about the Stations of the Cross. I'm Catholic, and I was raised in a very Catholic uh, home. Mm -hmm. uh, Easter week was very special to us. My mom, my mom would get all the laundry, all the house cleaning, everything done by Wednesday. Because then uh, the radio was covered, the TV was covered. We didn't watch TV, we didn't listen to radio, we didn't do anything. And on Friday, we would go to church and do the Stations of the Cross. Mm -hmm. And that was every, every, every year. And we observed it <clears throat> totally. And we always gave up something. But to me, that that means a lot to me. I like, you know, I like Easter because we we know what it's about. Um, right. Jesus gave His life for what, us. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a question for Rodney Lowry? Yes. Well, quick. Where does he uh, attend to? I mean, does he usually go to hospitals, or where does he go to? No, our ministry is uh, within the Fresno Police Department and community. Um, anytime there's a, a loss or a, uh, really any emergent needs here in Fresno, we'll respond out and provide care, comforting, and then whatever support we can offer. Okay, let's go back to the map real quick because I want to finish with these stations here. We finished up on Station 8, but here's the map. That's the path that Jesus walked on Good Friday on his way to being crucified up on the hill in the old city of Jerusalem. It's called now the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Of course, back more than 2,000 years ago, the church wasn't there, Rodney. Right. It was just a big hill. Now they built a church around it with a big cross. But Station 9 is where Jesus fell a third time. Then Station 10, uh, he was stripped of his clothes. Station 11, he was nailed to the cross. Station 12, uh, that's where he dies. And then Station 13 and 14, they took him off the cross and put him on the tomb. This walk, this path, I've actually walked it myself. I didn't see station one, but the rest of them, I took this walk myself uh, 13 years ago when I was in Jerusalem. It's very emotional. There are hundreds of thousands of people there from all over the world. What do you think that crucifixion means to the majority of Christians around the world, in your opinion? Well, in my opinion, I think it means that uh, they have an eternity that uh, is promised. It's guaranteed. Um, they look forward to, when they pass from this life, that they'll spend a lifetime with, uh, with God. What do you say to those non-believers that think, you know what? He was just a man. He was walking. He could have stopped it. He didn't stop it. If he was really the son of God, he could have stopped it. What's your, what would your answer be? Well, um, 
You know, he was either who he said he was, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, um, he was a liar, or he was crazy. It's one of the three. Um, witnesses went to their grave who had observed him do the miracles. They believed who he said he was. Uh, so there's strong witness information at the time um, that he was the Son of God. So historically speaking, we know he was a person. We know he uh, died at that time. It's whether you choose to believe in uh, whether he was crazy, a liar, or truly the Son of God. Right. Okay, we're talking with Rodney Lowry. We're going to talk about the uh, resurrection. Of course, that happened uh, two days later on Sunday. That's what Easter is all about, of course, the resurrection, uh, according to the scriptures. We're going to be back with more of our conversation here. 265-4331. Do you believe in Easter? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the resurrection? We're back with our show in just a moment. Is taking care of laundry taking too much of your time? Have you become a missing mom? With a new, fast, efficient washer and dryer from Ventura TV Video Appliance, you'll spend more of your day the way you want. Money. This Amana Super Capacity Washer Dryer Pair is now just $6.99. And this Heavy Duty Maytag Super Capacity Washer Dryer Pair is only $8.99. Don't spend your life on laundry. Upgrade today at Ventura TV Video Appliance and save. And we're back here on Connect With Me. Are you going to be celebrating Easter with your family? What are you going to be doing? What do you do on Easter? Do you go to church? Do you believe in the resurrection? We're talking with Rodney Lowry today. He's the police chaplain. Let's talk about the resurrection and uh, where some of these stories uh, came from. Now, uh, apparently after, um, according to the scripture, and I'm no expert, but according to what I've read, um, he was laid on a tomb, mm -hmm. and on the third day he rose. Right. And he appeared, uh, made himself uh, available to his mother, I believe, and to someone else, and he showed them the holes in his hands and his feet. Is that a true story, and do you believe that if it is? Yeah, and I, I believe that he showed the holes in his hand to uh, his mother, Thomas. Mary, right? Thomas. Right. Um, that's where we get the doubting Thomas, the, uh, his the doubting disciple. Doubting Thomases, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, All right. I, I do. I, I absolutely believe it, because if there's one flawed part of the Bible, then everything becomes flawed. Though I don't understand everything in Scripture, and I think it's Deuteronomy 29.29, 29, God basically says, listen, there are some things for God, and you won't understand all things. Do, do you think that the resurrection, does that mean that he actually rose up to heaven, through the sky, through the clouds, out in the space? A absolutely. I, I think really? uh, I think it was meant to, to be understood, literally. Um, again, can I wrap my mind around how that's done? <laughs> no, no. But that's, I don't that's think why any of us faith, can. And that's, that's why, why there's so many non-believers, because it's hard to wrap that around your own mind. Right. I mean, how does a guy survive? How does a guy, how does a human being, literally, die on the cross, nailed to the cross, hands and feet, and then rise up from the dead three days later? It's hard to wrap your mind around that. Right. And that's in part because though he was fully human, he was also fully God. That's, that's how he did it. And it's easier for me. It takes less faith for me to believe that he died and ascended and is a creator of this world rather than this world is purposeless. The, it was created uh, from nothing. There was no matter, and somehow uh, matter was produced Right. And all these living things germinated from that. I, to me, that takes more faith. Right. Let's put up on the screen a little bit of a slideshow of the crucifixion. And um, we're going to take a look at that right now. That's one of the stations in the old city of Jerusalem. I believe that's station one right there. We can just continue with this slideshow. Um, I believe that is near the Olives or the uh, Mount of Olives where... Uh, Jesus was captured, and then uh, he was tried near that area there. And there's a, a great shot of the old city right there. We do have a phone call, so let's take this while we look at, continue looking at these slides. There's the Dome of the Rock in the background. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. How are you? Hello? Are you there? Hello? Nope, not there. Okay, lost the phone call. But we continue to look at this. Is there anything in the Scripture, Rodney, that you've read uh, that creates a little bit of doubt in your mind at all? You know, I think 
I think we all have doubt at times, you know, it depends where we're at in life, what's going on in our lives, wondering, hey, God, are you aware of, uh, of my uh, circumstance right now? But I just feel that there's more proof that there is a God than there is not a God. Okay, a, a phone call here. Good morning, you're on Connect With Me. Okay, we keep getting... Nobody wants to talk to me today. We keep getting people on here that hang up. I don't know why, but uh, if you want to call in, be patient. It's 265-4331. We're looking at uh, a slideshow here of some of the pictures in uh, Jerusalem uh, and uh, Easter fast approaching. So even for priests, bishops, maybe even the Pope, maybe there is a little bit of doubt. Isn't that human nature? Oh, I think so. I think we all have doubt at time, but... Uh, that's not how we live our life. Uh, we live our life out through faith because we overcome doubt um, just based on our own experiences. Looking back in life going, oh, there was purpose there. And, you know, anytime we see purpose in life, there's, there's got to be someone that orchestrated that purposefulness. Um, it, it's, if we started off with random and chance, that's, that's how it's got to end. Do you, think, Pete, do you think that Easter makes us or makes some people look back and reflect at to what is really important in life or not? I do, I, I, I think, but it's so temporal. And I think we would be much better served, and I think it would be much more pleasing to God if, uh, if we would walk out our Christian faith daily rather than relying on, uh, you know, uh, Isn't religious that tradition. Isn't easier said than done? Absolutely. It's a decision that, uh, that we have to make each day when we get up. Um, and it's how you choose to fi uh, occupy your mind and your heart. Uh, right. We make decisions every day. Are we going to be nice to our friends, our family? Are Absolutely. we going to treat others the way we want to be treated? Absolutely. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Speak up a little bit. What's your question? Well, my question is, as believers, and as he is a chaplain, how can we better show our faith and in encourage someone else to believe in the Lord? That's a good question. How can we encourage someone else to believe in the Lord? How do you convince somebody? Well, the Bible tells us to always be ready to give an answer of that hope that lies in us. So that's one. Knowing our own story, knowing, knowing our own testimony, what brought us to faith. And, uh, and two, just being consistent um, with our walk and, and what we believe. Uh, not being preachy in people's lives, but really fulfilling the, uh, the two great commandments, loving our God and loving our neighbor, whoever that is. Uh, Here are the two questions that I get a lot. If there really is a God, there is so much suffering in this world that we live in. There is. The, the shootings in Newtown, Connecticut, with right. all of those children, if there is a God, how could he let this happen? How could he let the suffering happen? And if there is a God, how come we're not seeing the miracles today that we saw more than 2,000 years ago? How do you answer that? The, the first, I, you know, I really don't know how to answer, to be honest with you. How does he um, let other 26 than, people die in that school? How does he just sit by and watch it happen? I don't know that God sits by. Um, he, he tells us in his word that he is the righteous judge. And, and those that... Uh, that rebel against him will be judged um, when and, and his when? wrath no one he doesn't knows. he doesn't give us a timeline <laughs> but he does assure us that uh, yeah. there is a wrath that's stored up for people that uh, are rebellious and evil and uh, right. have not accepted the free gift of salvation in his son um, in response to the miracles the miracles that happened so many years ago why aren't they happening now i think they are absolutely i've got a i've got a 22 year old son that was born with cerebral palsy yeah and uh through prayer he he's got no signs no symptoms of ever having the disease rodney we got to wrap it up happy easter to you you too you too good Enjoy. to see you all right we want you Good back here you. again absolutely love being here all right rodney lowry the police chaplain for the fresno police department we appreciate uh, his time and your phone calls i appreciate that hey tomorrow don't miss the show another good one it's pete mihas the former superintendent of schools talking about what else fresno unified back tomorrow have a great day
James Arness is Marshal Matt Dillon. They were looking for me. They're going to be back. On Gunsmoke. That's right. Weekdays at 1 on MeTV.